Y'all, let's stand on our feet. Let's get ready. Today is our youth Sunday. Amen. I see some people got jerseys on. Is there a team playing today? <laughs> we serve an awesome God. He is worthy to receive glory, honor, and praise. Glad to have you with us. And for those of you who are joined via live, we're just so grateful and thankful that you join us. And it's so wonderful to be together in the house of the Lord. Amen. If you made it today, come on, just praise the Lord for being in the house of the Lord this morning. For an opportunity to worship him with your brothers and sisters in Christ. That's the beauty of, of really just coming to this ministry and coming to ministries all over the world. It's to worship God with your brothers and sisters in Christ. They may have something for you in that moment, something to say, just seeing a smile or getting that hug can be enough and something that you need, a word that's being spoken and said. And so we just thank you, Father, for your blessings today. Have your way in this service. We're submitted to your will and your authority. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We serve a greater God. He is greater than anything we can deal with. And we just thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. You're worthy to be praised, oh God. Oh, 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 water you turn into wine, say, water you turn into wine, open the eyes of the blind, yeah, open the eyes of the blind, say, there's no one like you, none like you, none like you, oh, into the darkness you shine, into the darkness out of the ashes we rise. Out of the ashes you rise. Come on, say. There's no one like you. Not like you. Not like you. Our God is greater, say. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Our God, is stronger. God, you are higher. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. Awesome Awesome in power, our God, our God, our God. Water you turn into wine, water you turn into wine. You open the eyes of the blind, open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Come on, say none like you, none like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. Not like you. Not like you. Oh, our God is greater, say. Our God is greater. Our God is strong. God, you are higher. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is our healer. God is healer. Awesome in power. Awesome in Awesome in power, awesome in power, our God, our God, our God, our God is greater. Our God is greater. He is stronger. Our God is stronger. He is higher. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, awesome in power, our God, our God, our God. And if our God is for us, and if our God is us. And if our God is with us, then what could 
Come on, say, end it for God. Awesome and power. Awesome and power. Our God. Our God. Our God. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. He is strong. Our God is stronger. He is higher. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome and power. Our God. Our God. And if our God is for us. And if our God is with us, hey. then what could stand Do you believe that today? Come on. And if our God is for what? us, then who could ever stop us? Hey. And if our God is with what? us, what? Then what could stand us? And if our God is for us, hey. then who could ever stop us? Yeah. And if our God is with hey. us, then what could stand us? And if our God is for us, hey. then who could ever stop us? Do you believe that? Yes, he is. He is higher, higher, yeah. You are greater than anything we can do with God. He is greater. He is greater. We serve a great and awesome God. And we are his, we are his children. We have been adopted into the kingdom of the Lord. What a wonderful thing to realize and to understand that we are children of the Most High God. We bless your name. I'm no longer a slave to fear, for I am a child of God. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. For I am a child of God. You unravel me, say. You unravel me. With the melody. With the melody. You surround me with the song. You surround me with 
the song of deliverance of deliverance from my enemies from my enemies to all my fears are gone to all my fears come on sing that one more time gone. come on say you unravel me you unravel me with the melody with the melody he surrounds me with the song Of deliverance, of deliverance, from my enemy, from my enemy, till all my fears are gone, till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave. Come on, say, I'm no longer a slave to fear, for I am a child of God. For I am a child. Come on, sing that like you believe it today. I'm no longer a slave I'm to fear. No longer a slave to fear. For I am a child of God. For I am a child of God. From my mother's womb. Come on, say this. From my mother's womb. You have chosen me. You have chosen me. Love has called my name. How many been born again? Say, I've been born again. I've been born again. Into your family. Into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. Your blood flows through I want to sing that one more time. From my mother's womb, Lord, From yes. My womb. You have chosen me. You have chosen me. Your love has called my name. Your love. I've been born again. I've been born again. Into your family. Into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. Flows through. My I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm no longer a slave to fear. For I am a child of God. what I know. That's what I proclaim. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Yeah. I'm no longer a slave Oh, I'm a child of the most high God. Yes, I am. I am oh. a child of God. Fear has no liberty over me. It has no I'm ruling no over me. I've been set free by the blood of the Lamb. I am a child of the most high God. Yes. Yeah. Come on, sing this. You split the sea so I can walk right through it. Say, you split the sea so I can walk right through. My fears are drowned in perfect love. My fears are drowned in perfect love. Lord, you rescued me. Yes, you did. You rescued me so I can stand it. That I am a child of God. Woo! One more time, you split the sea, Lord. Say, you split the sea so I can walk right through. My fears are drowned. My fears are drowned in perfect love. Oh, you rescued me. You rescued me so I can stand it. Then I am a child of God. I am a child. Oh, I gotta sing that one more time. Come on, he split the sea so I can walk right through his head. You split the sea so I can walk right through. My fears are drowned. My fears are drowned in perfect love. love. Lord, you rescued me. You rescued me so I can stand it. Then I am head. a child of God.
For I am a child of the Most High God. He's my father. He's my daddy. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Child of God, for I am a child of God. Come on, say I'm no longer. I'm no longer a slave to fear. For I am a child of God. 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 I am a child of God. Come on and sing that today, for I am, for I am a child of God. Come on, sing that, declare that today, say. For I am a child of God. All over this place, we declare that today, for I am. For I am a child of God. He's my daddy, I can go to him. For I am a child. A child, for I am a child of God. See, I am what I am, cause the great I am speaks over me. He speaks over me. You see, I am what I am, cause the great I am. Say, speaks over me. Speak. Come on, we're going to sing that. Say, I am what I am. Declare that today. Say, I am Because the great I am. Say, speaks over me. Oh, I believe that today. I am what I am. Come on, say, I am. I am what I am. Because the great I am. Because the great I am. Speaks over me. Speaks over me. Oh, I am what I am, say. I am what I am. Cause the great I am speaks over me. I am what I am, yes. I am what I am. Cause the great I am. Cause the great I am. Speaks over me. Speaks over me. Sing that again. I am what I am. I am what I am. Cause the great I am speaks over me. I am who you say I am. Say that. He said, you're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. Hey. He says, you're more than a conqueror. He says, you're healed in your body. I am who he says I am. Do you believe that today? Hey. I am, I am, I am. I'm the head and not the tail. Hey. I'm above and not beneath. I am more than a conqueror. Woo! I am more than victorious. I am who you say I am. I am who you say I am. I am who you say I am. You see, I am what I am. Cause the great I am. He sings over me. I'm so glad to know that today. See, I am who I am, cause the great I am speaks over me. That's what his word does. His word speaks and declares who I am in him. I am. Cause the great I am speaks over me. Come on, say that. I am who I am. Say that. Speaks over me. Speaks over me. Come on.
Come on, lift your hands and begin to declare that in this place today. I am say. I am what I am. Because the great I am. Because the great I am. Speaks over me. Speaks over me. Father, we receive your word today. I am who I am. I am who I am. Because the great I am. Speaks over me. Sing that one more time. I am who I am. Because the great I am. Speaks over me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, Revivers. Welcome to our Youth Sunday Morning Service. If this is your first time visiting for in-person service or on our Facebook Live, Pastor Paul, Lady Shannon, and the RCMI family welcomes you and thank you for joining us today. RCMI family, these are your announcements for the week of January 28, 2024. The cafe is open and they will be serving a delicious meal that includes loaded beef or chicken cheesesteaks with fries and your choice of Coke, Sprite, or Coke Zero for $15. They also have loaded cheesesteak fries for $12, chicken and wild rice soup for $6. Make sure you visit the cafe to get your delicious meal. Make sure you visit the gift shop for some Valentine's Day treats. There is something for everyone. Thank you for shopping with Graceful Gifts. Join us for our Wednesday Bible Studies at 7 p.m. This month, our topic will be on discipleship. Please join us as we learn the importance of discipleship in ministry. Thank you, Revivers, for your giving during 2023. If you would like a copy of your giving statement, please email rcmifinanceteam at gmail.com. Giving statements will be available February 4th through March 1st, 2024. Reminder, please print your full name on the giving envelope. For Cash App Giving, if your full name isn't in the cash tag, add it in the comments. We want to ensure you receive your appropriate credit. Thank you for your continued financial support for the ministry. The Covenant Keepers Marriage Ministry will be having their first event for the year, Monday, February 5th, and Monday, February 19th. Ballroom dancing lessons will be provided by instructors Brian and Monica Sanders. The first and third Mondays, 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. The cost is $10 per couple per session. Lessons will be held at 4588 Falcon Circle, Huber Heights, 45424. So please let Valerie Coleman know if you plan to attend. There are several ways to give. If you would like to give by Cash App, use the Cash App name, dollar sign R-E-V-C-E-N-M-I-N. -E you can also use your credit cards to swipe so you do not need to write your numbers on the envelopes. The finance team will be available before and after services to pay your giving using your credit cards. You still can give online as well. And thank you for your continued financial support for the ministry. We leave you with these words to think on. No one is too old or too young to be used by God. You're always the perfect age. Visitors, if this is your first time being here with Bible Center Ministries, we will not ask you what's going on. Oh. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But well, Father, right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command by the power of God every demonic spirit, every demonic stronghold to be loosed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That spirit of suicide, you 
foul devil. You leave his mind right now in the name of Jesus. You have no authority in the name of Jesus. Oh, my Yes. Oh, my Yes. Yes. The name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes, yes. Yes, right now. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. He would not, that's right. Yes. 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 Mm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Father. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Let the peace of the Lord rest on him right now. Let the peace of God. I speak peace over him, peace over his mind. Peace be still in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are who you are. Because the great I am. He speaks peace over you. Oh, James, you are who you are. Because the great I am, he speaks over you. Oh, oh, hey, you are who you are. Because the great I am, he sings over you right now. He sings over you. Songs of deliverance, songs of peace, songs of love. Oh, Woo, my God. Hey. Oh. He speaks love over you. The banner over you is love. Oh. Every stronghold is broken up in your life. You are who you are. Because the great I am. He speaks over you. He loves you. Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how God loves you. Oh, how he loves you. Oh, he loves you. Oh, come on, sing that with me. Oh, come on, everybody. I want everybody to sing that. Come on, fill this place with the love of the Lord. Just sing that. He needs to hear that in his spirit. He loves. Say, oh, how he loves. Oh, God's love is covering you right now. He loves you. Say, he loves. Oh, how he loves you. The love of the Lord is covering you right now. Yeah. The love of the Lord. Hallelujah. Perfect love. Cast out all fear. Perfect love. Cast out all fear. Hallelujah. He loves you, Lord. He loves you. Say, he. Oh. He loves you, yeah. Oh, he loves you. Yes, he does. Oh. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on him right now. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on him. My, fall afresh on him right now. I speak a refreshing by the power of the Holy Spirit. Fall afresh on him right now. My God, fall afresh. 
Fall afresh. Oh, God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Fall afresh on him right now. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to be preaching about that. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Continue to pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The word of the Lord says, Thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. You are the glory and the lift up of our head. And so I'm actually ministering today. So I just believe even the stuff the Lord has me minister is going to be lined up today with what's happening in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is real. And he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. But it still takes you to open up your heart and open up your spirit. You still have to do your part. You have to receive what God has for you. Well, I was doing if any first-time visitors, if this is your first time being here with Bible Center Ministries, as you can already tell, we are not a traditional church. <laughs> so we, we move as the Lord tells us to move. So if this is your first time, if you can stand, we just want to greet you. Welcome. So glad to have you here. Any other first-time visitors, we're so glad to have you. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. On behalf of Revival Center Ministries, Pastor Paul and Lady Shannon and the RCMI family, if you're online and visiting as well, if you can put your name in the chat, we just thank you so much for being here. If you can do me a favor and stand up and hug someone, love on someone today. The youth are in here today. This is Youth Sunday, but they stay in here today. We're not having any dismissals. Hallelujah. Yes. The glory and the lifter up of my head. Thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory and the lifter up of my head. Thou art a lifter. Man, that's an old one. Yeah. By him. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. By him. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is here. And wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. Hallelujah. We thank God for freedom here today. Glory to the name of Jesus. Well, like I said, today is our Youth Sunday. One of the things that we said that we were going to be doing was we were going to be really discipling our young people and training them up to get up and take this mic as well. One of the things that the, the saying said is you are never too young or too old to be used by the Lord or for God to use you. Never too, your age right now is the perfect age, no matter what you've done. But we really want to show the young people how God can use them and how he, no matter what age they are, he can speak through them. 
And one of the things that we're going to be talking with the youth about is uh, Proverbs. We're, we're studying the book of Proverbs with our young people. And so every fourth Sunday, one of our young people will come and do an exhortation. And today we have Ramir who's going to come up here and give us a word. Amen. Let me just tell you, I just love him. He has such, he has one of the sweetest, kindest hearts. And when he first started coming, I just, he, he was, he was, I instantly fell in love with his heart and his spirit and his kindness. So let's put our hands together as he comes to give us a, an encouraging word today. The Simmons' grandson. First off, I want to start off saying, how everybody doing? How everybody doing? All right, all right, all right. Um, I want to say that um, it's a good day to be here. I'm glad I was able to wake up this morning. Uh, I'm going to just read what the paper says. Um, I wrote, good morning, Revival Center Ministry. I am Ramir. I am 16, and I am the grandson of Tony and Karen Simmons. I am, I, and I go to Thurgood Marshall High School. I just want to say nowadays it's all too easy to forget that every day is a gift. But in the hustle and bustle of everyday life, it's important to remember that every day is a new journey of spiritual fulfillment. May God's blessing surround you and bring you great joy today. It's also very good to start your day by praising God for his amazing and goodness and mercy. Have a blessed day and stay strong in faith. Amen. We thank God for Minister Durrell and Kanye. They're working with our young people. Let's put our hands together. Come on, y'all. Let's show them some love. Yes, come on. Are you going to do the offering? Oh, okay. Everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise. Come on, you can do better than that. Put your hands together and let God know. Come on, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I said make a joyful noise unto the Lord. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. You know, I, I think we make a statement all the time. We always say God is good, but the key thing I want you to focus on, he's good all the time. I know you think you good, but you're not good all the time. Y'all get that? You're not good all the time. He's good all the time. He's and, and that's why good good things don't bad things don't happen to good people. Bad things happen to bad people. Jesus had to tell. He said, "Ain't none good." When the rich, rich and ruler said, "Good master," he said, "Ain't none good." Because we can't be good all the time. So we have to totally depend on God. Our total dependency is on him because I'm glad he's good all the time. Y'all get that? I'm glad he's good all the time. Because if, if, if he wasn't good all the time, I, I, I wouldn't even be here. I'd be in my grave. I'd be in prison somewhere. I'd be, I'd be messed up in my mind But he, it, because he's good. Think about it. He took Paul and kicked him off his horse. Paul didn't do what he did because he was something good was about him. Good, no, he 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 did what he did because God chose him. So the only reason why you here is because he chose you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you didn't do nothing good. You were on your way to hell. You, we were all on our way to hell. The only reason why we're here and we're saved because God, 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 God said, I want you. 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 We didn't do nothing to get this. It's because he's good all the time. And so I'm, I'm thankful that he chose me. Now, now I have a different, watch this, watch this, watch this. I have a different expectation than I had before. My expectation is going to be different now. And, 
and I'm glad about it. You take your seats. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. Raise your hand if you need an envelope. We're going to take our offering. It's because of you and your giving consistently to make it possible for us to run ministry and do the ministry we do. Keep your hand up. Make, let, let them know you need an envelope. Don't put your hand down. You can cash out. Those who are just watching us by Facebook Live, you, there are ways you can give, and it just go, goes across the screen on how you can give. Do the best you can, as you always do. For God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound towards us. All grace, every favor, earthly blessing, come to us in abundance that you may always, under every circumstance and whatever the need be, self-sufficient, self-employed, possessing enough that you require no aid, no support, furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. I'm blessed to be a blessing. That's the grace I want on my life all, at all times. God's unmerited favor. He chose us to be here. He's good all the time. So make sure you fill out your envelope and, and do what you do best. Give, give out the abundance of your heart. Out of the abundance of your heart. God don't want it unless it comes from the heart. It has to come from the heart. That's important. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Stand on your feet. Everybody stand on your feet again. We ask y'all to sit down and stand up a lot here. You should be used to it. You've been coming here a long time. You know the routine. Father, I'm grateful for your goodness and your grace towards us. You saved us at the core of our being. We don't do right all the time. Without you, we can't, we, can't, we can't do it anyway. So I thank and I praise you. For it's God working in me both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Not by might nor by power, but by his spirit, says the Lord. So everyone in here, Father, no lack. No lack in anybody's life in here. No lack in our faith, no lack in our finances, no lack. God hates lack. And you want to, you position us that we lack nothing. And I thank you for that. And I praise you for that. And we give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, remain standing. Walk. Walk. Start from the back. They're going to lead you out.
let's, let's thank the Lord for our two-part band. They bad, though. <laughs> I love Corey and Jay. I appreciate them. Well, I'm standing to bring the word of the Lord today. And, um, you know, for, before I do that, I do want to just thank the Lord, first of all, for um, my husband and my family. I want to start with that. Let me thank the Lord for my husband. I thank God for him and just for the man of God that he is and for my daughters, Heaven and Majesty. I can't believe Heaven will be going to college this year, y'all. She's going to I already have the college she's going to, University of Finley. She's going to be studying veterinarian science, so she's going to be a vet. Amen. She loves animals. So a lot going on, but I'm, I just want to do that before I start. Just give thanks to my family. I see Brittany out there. Hey, what's up, Brittany? Uh, sorry, y'all. She used to be in the choir praise thing, so I ain't seen her in a while. But um, let's go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. And I, I, I just thank God for, you know, even the situation that happened. God, God, God has got him. Look, he already came in different. Amen. Thank God for the love that is shown. And God uses us to show love to other people. And I just believe that the word that he's given me to minister today. And I don't want, I want to say it's a warning because, you know, this word has been like, oh my gosh, it's been in my spirit for probably the last month. And he just kept speaking that to me. And anytime the Lord gives me a word like this, you know, it's like I got I know I have to get it out. But I also want to make sure that I'm following the voice of the Holy Spirit. So let's go ahead and pray. So, Father, first of all, I surrender my will to your will. And I pray even today that you would have your way in this service. Father, you've already prepared the atmosphere. I know that because that's what I prayed for. But I speak right now, he that has an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. Open up the ears and the eyes of the people today. Today, Father. We thank you for what you're going to manifest in this service through your word. Because your word is powerful. It transforms lives. Your word is living. It's life. Thank you for the life and the living word today. Your living word. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm, I'm going to do, like I always will, especially with this being Youth Sunday, not that this message is tailored to everybody. I think everybody. But I like to do uh, PowerPoints. Because, you know, I'm, I'm a teacher too, so I know the people are visual learners, you got the kinesthetic learners, you got the, the hearing learners. And so I want to be able to provide just visual for this, because sometimes I think visual takes it into another place, gives you another perspective of, of what I'm ministering and what I'm speaking to you today. So let's go ahead and start by opening up our Bibles or our Bible apps or whatever you use to Hebrews 3. I'm going to read a lot, so um, Hebrews 3, 1 through 19. And I'm sure that they have that ready. They're going to go ahead and put it up, and you can follow along on the screen. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. He is faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses. We're talking about Jesus. Inasmuch as he who had built the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by some man. But he that builds all things is God. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ as son over his own house, whose house are we? If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoice of the hope firm unto the end. We are his house, but we got to do what? Hold fast that confidence. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today, if you will hear his voice, Harden not your heart, as in the provocation or the day of rebellion is what it's talking about. In the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years, they saw miracles, 40 years, and it grieved him. He, God was saying, I'm tired of this church. With that generation, he said, they do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath that they will not enter into my rest. He said, take heed, pay attention, brethren, lest there be any of you an heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily why it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. So for those of you who are holding to that confidence to the end, while it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation. For some, when they heard, they did provoke 
how be it not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. So everybody didn't go into the promised land. But with whom he was grieved 40 years. Can you imagine being mad at somebody for 40 years? Can you imagine having someone that's getting on your nerves for 40 years? Was it not with them that, somebody said, will we, that has sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness, to whom swear he that should not enter into his rest, but to them that did not believe. So we see that they did not enter because of unbelief. But the word of the Lord to you today is, do not harden your heart. I've been hearing that very clear. Do not harden your heart. That's been real strong in my spirit. Because I believe that's what's happening with many believers. Many believers are hardening their heart. But I want to talk about today, what are the causes? What causes a believer or what causes anyone to harden their heart? What causes that to happen? The first thing that we read about is the first thing he said today, if you would do what? Hear my voice. He said, if you listen to my voice, hear me. Slide two, give me slide two. I don't want to have to do this, but that's okay. If you would hear my voice, so the causes and preventing of hardening the hearts. He said, if you would hear my voice, that's the first step. His voice is his word. You have to hear the voice of the Lord. You got to listen to his word. And ironically, I was going through Facebook, and Sister Michelle Potter had something about that, hearing the voice of God. And so I stole something from your Facebook that I, that I want to put up. So a lot of times we may have in, our, in ourselves, how do I hear the voice of God? And she had a little thing up, and it's going to come up in a few minutes. Um, this is the way that you know whether it's God's voice versus whether it's Satan's voice. And I love this. God's voice steals you. God's voice leads you. His voice reassures you. His voice enlightens you. His voice encourages you. His voice comforts you. And I'm especially talking to my babes in Christ because I've had this question answered or asked before. How do I know it's the voice of God? How do I know it's God talking to me? He calms you. He convicts you. We don't like to hear that. When you feel a conviction, God convicts you. He doesn't condemn you. This is Satan's voice. He rushes you. He pushes you. He frightens you. He confuses you. He discourages you. He worries you, obsesses you, and condemns you. All of those things are opposite of what God's word does. If your flesh is hurting, usually it's God's voice. If your flesh don't want to do it, usually it's God talking to you. Because a lot of times we don't want, we want to do what our flesh wants to do. We want to do what we want to do. We want to live how we want to live. We want to say what we want to say. But anytime we're using constraint and we're saying, no, you know, you're not supposed to do that. That's the voice of the Lord telling you, don't say that. Don't do that. Hold your, what they say, hold your mule. Stop. Don't let that thing come out of your mouth. It's easy for us to do things that we want to do in our flesh. That's easy to do. That's why the Bible tells us to what? He said, crucify the flesh. This next scripture, Hebrews 4 and 12 says this, and this is a very powerful scripture. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. This is what the word of God is able to do, and of the joints and marrow, and the word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. You, there's no way that you can be a believer and not read the word of God. There's no way that you can be a believer and a walker of God and not study his word. Because it's the word of God that's going to pierce your heart. It's the word of God that's going to change you, that's going to transform you. It's the word of God that's going to teach you exactly what God is looking for you to do. It is the word of God. That's his voice. The word of God is God's voice speaking to you. He's talking to you every day you open up the Bible and you read it. He's saying something to you. He's speaking to you. John 12 and 48 says this. And this is a very powerful scripture too. He that rejects me and receives not my words has one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last days. It means you're going to be judged by the message that you hear and you reject. Every single time you come into this service and you hear the word of God and people are speaking the word of God and every single time you reject it, that's what you're going to be judged by. When you reject the word of God, he does not want you to reject it. He wants you to hear him. He has something to say. So one of the ways that you do not harden your heart is by listening to the voice of God. It's a very dangerous place when you get to a place where you can't distinguish between God's voice and the devil's voice. 
When you don't know, and especially when you've been walking with the Lord for a long time, and you can't distinguish between the voice of God and whether or not that's, I, is, that you, is that you talking, Father? Is that the voice of God, or is that the voice of the devil? Whose voice is it? John 10, verse 27 says this. But my sheep hear my voice. Listen to this. He says, I know them, and then they follow me. So not only do the people that belong to me hear my voice, he says, I know them, and they follow me. He says, and I shall give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them to me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Why? Because they know him, they follow his voice. When you are listening to the voice of God, you are doing what he tells you to do. When you don't listen to the voice of God, it causes your heart to become hardened. Every time you reject his word, it's like you're putting something over your heart. You see how the, I have the heart and there's brick over there? Every time, that you reject the heart, every time you reject the voice of God, you reject listening to him, then you open up yourself to your heart becoming hardened. The next thing that hardens your heart in that word It says, harden not your heart as in the day of rebellion, in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me and proved me and saw my works for 40 years. Can you imagine being a person in the children of Israel? First of all, let's not even talk about all the plagues, y'all. Let's not talk about seeing the miracle through that. But could you imagine being someone and walking through a sea that's literally parted? Can you imagine receiving manna from heaven, being fed from God, his his food, and still tempting him, and still being rebellious, and still doing whatever you want to do? What is the opposite of rebellion? Obedience. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. How do you keep your heart from being hardened? You obey God, but a lot of times, a lot of the rebellion causes our hearts to be hardened. First, we're not listening to the voice of God. And because we're not listening to him, then it causes us to rebel against him. God does not want that. He wants us to be obedient to his word. That's an important part of you becoming who God has called you to be. It's almost like, I'm going to bring this down to the young people, when your mama is calling you or your daddy is calling you to do something and you're acting like you don't hear them. Who I'm talking to, young people out here. Or your mama is calling you on the cell phone and you reject the call. You see that's your mama, for some reason, or your daddy, or whoever calling you, and you think they're gonna ask you to do something. You think God's gonna ask you to do something. You think God is requiring something from you, and he is. So you see the call, but you push that, what is that, that end? (laughs) That ignore button? How many times have God called you and you've ignored his call? How many times have God, he's he's been calling on you, he's been tugging on you. Every single time you reject God when he's calling on you, you are hardening your heart. It's becoming more difficult and more difficult for you to get closer to God because you keep rejecting him. And every time you say no, you get farther apart, farther away from him. And every time you say no, you get farther back, farther back. And then you, you find yourself in this wilderness and you're like, where are you, God? And you wonder where God is and God's still there, but you... You rejected him. I'm calling you. You keep rejecting him. He's calling you. He's asked. He has something for you. You can't worry about your past. You can't worry about whether or not you're capable. You think God is going to call you and not give you what you need in order for that call? You think that a God who created the heaven and earth can't equip you to do what he called you to do? You think a God who's all-powerful that every single time you wake up, you have breath in your lungs because of him can't give you what you need to do what he's asked you to do? We, you, 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 you think we, God is that weak? All he needs for you is to surrender to him. He needs you to obey him. And every single time you reject him, then you're falling farther, farther away from him, and it's causing your heart to be hardened. And he's saying, don't you get rebellious like those kids, those children of Israel. They seen all my miracles. Let me tell you something. Y'all done seen God do some amazing things in your life, and you still ain't going to obey him? Some of y'all even shouldn't be here today. You shouldn't even be here today. 
But because of the grace of God, you are here. How can you not obey his voice? How can you not say yes to the will of the Father? He's a good God, like Paul, Pastor Paul said all the time. I know we say that as a cliche, but it's the truth. Rebellion can cause us to get our hearts hardened. This scripture says this, 1 Peter says, Wherefore, gird up your loins. I think I, I think I got the gird up your loins. So gird up, that's Carrie talks about, that's my country accent. <laughs> gird up your loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children. What does that say? As what? Say that again. As what? Not fashioning yourselves according to the form of lust in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is what? Be what? In all manner of conversation, because it is written, be holy for what? Well, you know what? No, let me tell you something. God is our father. Is that correct? If God, who is all-knowing, all-wonderful love, why do you think he wouldn't want you to be like him? Why wouldn't you think, I mean, there are some parents that are horrible parents. Our parent is a great, God is a great father. He's wonderful. He's magnificent. He's holy. I mean, you can't have a better father than God. Now, I'm not talking about, so if your earthly father, no, if you have an earthly father that didn't do what he was supposed to be, no, you don't want to be like him, but you want to be like your father, and father, he expects you to be like him. He wants you to be like him. For, he said, he didn't say, be holy if you want to. He said, be holy for I am holy. He is calling for you to be set apart. He's calling for you to be consecrated. He's calling for you to be different. He don't want you to be like the world. Because he knows that if you continue to be like the world, then what that's going to do is going to harden your heart. And so when he's knocking at the door and when he's calling, when he's trying to call you, you're going to hang up on him. He, God don't want you to hang up on him. And I'm talking to the young people. He wants you to answer the call. Because if you, if you answer his call, he got something for you. He's going to make sure you have everything you need to accomplish the task. God's not going to lack. He's not going to, Pastor Paul talked about no lack. He's going to make sure you do not lack in what you have to accomplish and what you have to do. The next thing that can cause us, it's the third thing, is an unbelieving heart. An unbelieving heart. It says here, take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you, and it says this, of an evil heart of unbelief. And this next part says, departing from the living God. There is a lot of us who are dealing with unbelief. And it's very interesting because when the Lord brought me to this point, all of this is in Hebrews 3, unbelief. Unbelief is going to keep a lot of you out of the kingdom of God. And unbelief, it says this. Did, you, did they put that clip up? This is very interesting. Faith says God can, God will. Unbelief says God can't, God won't. That's a very dangerous mindset to have. Unbelief is one of the most dangerous things to have. Why? Because there's a scripture that says, without faith, it's what? Impossible. You can't even, well, it's impossible to please God. Why? For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. It's impossible to please God without faith. So if you're walking in unbelief, that's a very dangerous place. And let me say this. Life can cause you to have unbelief. You know that? Life. How many of you have grieved and you've stayed in grief and you've lost people and you've had sickness and you have illnesses and things can come on you and that can cause unbelief to creep into your life? Do you know life just in general can cause that to happen? Especially when it seems like you're going through the same thing and the same thing and it seems like nothing is changing. You're praying and it seems like you know, your prayers are not getting answered. Do you know unbelief can creep in? And you have to be careful that you don't let life cause you to unbe unbelief to happen in your life. Just things that happen to us, divorces, loss of loved ones, sickness, all those things that happen to us in life can cause unbelief to creep into our heart. Because when we're going to difficult things and we're going to things that in our natural body we're fighting against our spirit to believe that God can bring us through it. And even Brother James, as he was sitting up here and saying, I'm tired. That's life. I'm tired. I'm tired. But you have to understand that God is greater than your tiredness. 
that you have to keep your mind stayed on him. He said, if you keep your mind stayed on me, I will keep your mind in perfect peace. So you got to do something so you don't let life bring unbelief into your heart and cause you to get hard. Why do you think they called it? They cold hearted. You a cold hearted person. Nothing moves you. It seems like you have no feelings. Your heart has hardened because life has been hard. And sometimes it's hard for you to get over the life situations that cause unbelief to creep into your home, in your heart. It starts building up walls. All of us can say we've been through things that have been rough. I've been through times and situations. I'm like, God, where are you? Are you have you left me? What? And I've got upset and I've got angry. Like, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? Why me? Why me? Somebody said, why not? Why me? We ain't saying why not. We said, why me? We don't want those things to happen to us. But we still have to keep our minds stayed on him. We still have to believe God is going to bring us through, Father. I trust in your word. I won't let this thing of life keep me from believing that you are able. You're able to bring me out of this. You're able to bring me through, God. Hallelujah. I'm going to be like Job. No matter what happens, I'm going to still believe. No matter what happens. Aye, hallelujah. I'm still going to stand firm. I'm not going to let unbelief creep into my heart. I got to stand on the word of God. I got to stand on his word. He remains faithful to his word. He's faithful to his word. So that's why I got to stay in it. I got to stand on it. I got to cover myself with it because he remains faithful to it. He can't turn his back on his word. He said, I put my word above my name. My word would not return void, but it would accomplish what it was sent to do, where I sent it to go. That's his word. So life can get difficult. Life can get hard, but I still got to believe. I still got to trust. I still got to know that God can do anything he said. Because he said without faith it's impossible to please him. I still got to believe. I can't let bitterness, I can't let unforgiveness, I, I can't let being angry, and that's what's happened. You've let bitterness and angry and being angry creep into your heart. Because you mad at somebody. You mad at your mama. You mad at your daddy. You mad at your spouse, how they treated you. And you've allowed your heart to become hardened because of life. And unbelief has crept in. And you let unforgiveness go in there. And he said, if you don't forgive other people, I'm not going to forgive you. And you wonder why you feel lost and why you feel alone. Because God can't go against his word. If you can't forgive your brother, and he said, how can I forgive you? He can't go against his word. And a lot of us have allowed life to creep in. And because of that, we find ourselves in situations where the heart is getting harder. It's getting harder. People are trying to talk to you and you don't want to hear. But you don't understand that it's not the people. People can talk your ear off. You the one that got to do the work. People can pray over you. We can speak the word over you, but until you release that thing that you've been holding on to, until you let go of that thing that has kept you in bondage, until you release every bondage, everything that has kept you bound, until you let it go, it's going to stay there. Your heart's going to remain hard. But until you say, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Lord, I believe, but if there's an area in my life that I need to release, Father, help me, God. I surrender that to you. And watch the spirit of the living God just rest on you once you surrender completely and totally to him. Life. Life can do this to us. Things that happen in our life can do that. 
2 Timothy 3 and 5 says this, and why this is important, because it says, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. There's a lot of people who speak the word and whatever, but they have no power. They just have the form. They still are walking in the unbelief. They have just mastered what it sounds like to sound correct. You know, you can master a thing and not even believe it. You know, you can master something but not believe in it. You have a lot of people who come to church who've mastered coming to church. They've mastered speaking in tongues. They've, that's why he said, you can do all that in my name. And I'm looking at you and say, I don't even know you. Is that not powerful and scary at the same time? That's like powerful and scary at the same time. You're telling me that I went through all of this form of godliness, but I denied the power? I went through all this. I came to church. I served. I did this. But I did, not, but I did this religiously. This wasn't a relational thing. I did it because I thought it was the right thing to do, but I didn't believe in it. I don't want to be in that place. It's too many. It's, it's more believers, I believe, that's walking in the form than walking in the power. That's why we ain't got no power in the church. We just got a bunch of form walkers. Bunch of form walkers. Where are the power walkers at? Where are the people that are actually walking in the power and the authority that the Lord has given them as believers. I refuse to be a powerless believer. I refuse it. As a believer of the most high God, of my daddy, who said the same power that resurrected Jesus Christ from the grave, live on the inside. Lives on the inside of me. I can't reject that. And a lot of you are reading the word that you don't even believe. You ain't even reading it, but when you read it, you don't believe it. How you reading something, you don't believe it? No, I don't really believe it. I'm just reading it because that's what I'm supposed to do. You're wasting your time. You think I want to go before the throne and he say, I didn't know you? The last thing that keeps your heart or that can keep you or can make or, or bring a, a hard heart is, is the deceitfulness of sin. It says right here, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin is so deceitful. Why? Because you don't even know you sinning and you doing it. Or you somehow find a way to accept or, or, or say, yeah, well, it's, well, well it's, not, it's not actually, no, nah, no, it is actually. We're always trying to make excuses for our sin. And as long as you continue to make excuses, then you continue to deceive yourself. He said, how is your heart hardened? Through deceitfulness of sin. Because we begin to make idols. Oh my God, idolatry, idolatry. That's the Holy Spirit talking right now. We begin to make idolatries. Our friendships, our relationships become greater than God in our life. And that is a sin. Anytime you put things, jobs, pursuing money, pursuing a career, pursuing things above God, then they become, that becomes idolatry and that becomes a deceitfulness of sin. Because in your mind, you try to justify it. Well, I'm doing this because in the long run, I'm helping other people. But no, 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 no. But, but God, he, he wants to do, he has plans for you. You're doing your own thing. You, you just want to do your own thing. But God calls us to righteousness. He calls us to right living. He calls us to be like him. As a matter of fact, I read a scripture that says, be ye holy for I am holy. Proverbs 28 says this in 13. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whoever confess it and forsake them, he's going to have mercy on you. So for those of you who want to go ahead and cover your sin up, and a lot of times we do that because we, be, I'm going to tell you why we another, I'm, I'm going to tell you one of the reasons why we do that. Because the church has not learned how to restore people right. Okay? We beat people up. So don't nobody want to tell you they sin because they think you're going to judge them. Or you're going to talk about them. Or you're going to talk to somebody else about them. So don't nobody want to tell you what they're really going on because they think you're going to tell all their business. And we ain't supposed to be doing that. 
people should be able to come to the church and feel like they can go to you and trust you to share what they're dealing with so they can confess their faults to one to another, and then you can go ahead and be healed. Not, I'm going to confess my, you know what, some people are scared because they know you're going to tell their business. And you have told their business, which is why some people have left the church. They left the church because they came to you in confidence, shared something with you, and what you do, you wouldn't told everybody else. It came back to them, and they got mad, they got church hurt, and guess what? Their heart got hardened. You was a part of their heart being hardened. That's life. Some of you are coming back from being church hurt. Y'all just now coming back in. You, you know, you're peeking in the church doors like, should I try this again? Should I try this one more time? But you can't be, you can't be, in, you can't be on that. You can't worry about that. Because there are some people that are still growing, y'all. People need grace. Now, I'm not talking to the ones who, that's why I said that form of godliness. You got people been in church for 30 years that have a form and don't have no power. Them people messed up too. They've been in church 40 years. And they still the same. I know I was different than I was 20 years. You can ask some people to been in the church. I, I was one of the ones offending people. I was. I was one of the offenders of the brethren. <laughs> they call Carrie that. I didn't have grace, y'all. And God had to have me take, go through some things so that I knew how to be able to give people with grace. Now people know they can tell me stuff. <laughs> I wasn't always like that. Anybody who know me, like Mel know me. Look, they used to duck when people see me. I was, I was a mean Christian. How you gonna be a mean Christian? I mean, see, I'm, I'm confessing what I was, but I ain't that way no more, y'all. God has given me grace. Hallelujah. I had to go through, I had to go through some things. He allowed me to go through personal things for me to either get to, get to that place. But a lot of times people don't want to share. They don't want to share their sins or they don't want to be uncovered because we don't know how to cover them back. They're uncovering their sins and we should with grace and love cover them over. Oh, hallelujah. That's a beautiful thing. When somebody can share what they're going through. I'm struggling with this. Let me cover you, sister. God is good. He's able. I'm here for you. Give me a call when you really find it difficult. If you're going through something, just here's my number. And I'll pray with you. And we'll stand against every wickedness and every deceitful thing because I don't want you to be lost. That's the real thing. Not, oh my God, you did that? Oh my God, you in that? Uh, oh my goodness, uh. That's what we do. We're not supposed to do that. Because guess what? Does God say, uh, you did that? Uh, you did that? What if God did that to us? What? You did that? Oh my God, uh, you did that? Oh, myself. <laughs> what? What if God did that to us? He doesn't. He says, love covers a multitude of faults. It's by his love that draws us. Because even in our stinking sin, even in our condition, he still loves us. And that's what the ministry is. It's a, the ministry of love. And that's one of the ministries, one of the strongest ministries that my father built this one church on was loving one another. Love, love. And when you love them where they're at, then they'll feel comfortable to come out. They'll feel comfortable to share. Some people just need to share what they're going through to get delivered. They've been hiding it so long, it's hard in their heart. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. I'm feeling the power of God. Oh, my God. The Lord is going to do something in this place today. You just got to receive it and believe it. He wants to break some chains. Hallelujah. Off of your life today. My God. Hallelujah. He want to destroy some yokes today. It's the anointing that destroys the yokes. He want to break some things off of some of you today. But you can't be deceived by the sin that you're in. He said you are the righteousness of God. You're doing right not because of anything that you're able to do, but because he lives on the inside of you. And he causes you to do those things that are right. It ain't because of your own power, your own ability. It's not because of anything that we do. 1 John 2 and 29 says, If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Mark 7 says this in verse 20. And he said, That which cometh out of a man, that defileth the man from within. Out of the heart of man proceeds evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, 
blasphemy, pride, foolishness, foolishness. All of these evils come from within that defile a man. Do you know there is a saying that we say? And, I, and I'm, I'm guilty of saying this. Follow your heart. Just follow your heart. Do you know the Bible says that the heart is one of the most wicked things and deceitful above all? He says, who can know it? Follow your heart. No, some of y'all followed your heart into bad relationships, followed your heart into bad decisions, followed your heart into bad marriages, followed your heart into life of sin. If your heart is not completely yielded to God, you can't follow that. And we've been guilty of, t- I, like I said, because I, you know, I, young people just thought, no, you can't follow your heart, baby. As a matter of fact, you can't follow your heart. You have to follow his voice. Because the heart is going to lie to you. The heart is going to appease the flesh. The heart is going to do what the heart wants to do. It wants to love the wrong people. It wants to connect himself to bad relationships. It wants to do things that make the flesh feel good. Oh, I just want to do that. No, 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 no. You can't follow your heart. Can you imagine, and just think about this, can you imagine following something that's deceitful and wicked? Would you, would you knowingly, as a person who is a deceitful, wicked person, you're going to say, you know what, I, I want to hook up with them. And you know that. You know what, I think they make a good friend. That's what you say when you say, I want to follow my heart. That I want to follow something that's deceitful and wicked, especially if it's not yielded to God. That's why you got to give all of yourself to him. You can't be in the middle. Because God don't even accept that. He said he'll spew you out of his mouth. Look, you're either going to be for him or not for him. There's no in-between. You're gonna, that's the the in-between are the, I never knew you. You want to stand before God and hear, a, I never knew you? Psalms 106 and 3. This is my last one. I'm done, y'all. Psalms 106 and 3 says this. Blessed are they that keep judgment, and he that doeth righteousness at all times. Not sometimes. At what time? That means we have to do our best to do what God has called us to be. That's why we got to crucify our flesh. You, you guys, you got to die to yourself. But I'm going to tell you something. When you allow these things to creep into your life, not listening to the voice of God, rebelliousness, unbelief, when you allow the deceitfulness of sin, all of those things are hardening your heart. They're making you hard. And, make, and you can know, listen here, any of you guys that have known people that have left the church, you know they have a hard heart. You can tell. You can tell they don't want to hear what you got to say. They don't want to listen to you because their heart has become hard. And it's hard to speak to them. And you really got to ask the Holy Spirit to pray and give you wisdom on how to deal with them. You have to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, show me how to come at them. Show me what to say to them that would at least open up their ears to hear. Or even some of the seeds that were planted in their life, Father. I pray that those seeds, Lord God, would, would, be, would, would spring up in their life. Today, this is what the word of the Lord says. If you hear his voice... Do not harden your heart. Today, somebody say today. If you would hear his voice, do not harden your heart. And I heard the word of the Lord say this so strong. He said, today is the day. He said, today is the day. And I don't know who that's for, but I know it's for somebody. He said, today, if you hear his voice and don't harden your heart, Today, he didn't say tomorrow because we don't know what happened tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't have, forget about what happened yesterday. You can't go back and repeat nothing. You can't have repeat days. Today is the day. Who am I talking to today? Today is the day. Come on, everybody stand up. Today is the day. Today is the day. Today is the day 
Too many times God has spoken to you and he said things to you. You've ignored his call. If that's you, come up here. Today is the day. If you want to give your life to the Lord, if you want to receive Jesus Christ, if you don't know if he was to die today, whether or not you would go to see him, today is the day. A lot of us have found out that life and things that have happened to us, for those of you who are watching online, if I'm talking to you, put your name in the chat. Today is the day. It is the day for you to say, I surrender totally and completely to you. And that's why he said, today, if you would hear his voice, I just spoke the word of God. That's his voice speaking to you right now. Do you know the word I'm speaking to you? That's his voice. He said, harden not your heart. Who is that? Don't waste your time. Don't waste a moment. Don't waste a second. Don't allow your heart to keep you from doing what God has called you to do. Who is that? It could be a lot of people. I don't know. I just heard that so strong in my spirit. Today is the day. Y'all know how I am. I don't play. Look, don't play with God. If you, if you, if you know he's speaking to you, don't reject him calling you. Don't reject God speaking and saying, come. And he's been speaking to you over and over and over again. And a lot of you have been rejecting. And you've been ignoring the calls. If that's you, do not be afraid to stand up here and say, today is the day. Today is the day. Today is the day. And there's a song that says, don't let it be said. Too late, too late. Don't allow this moment to pass you by. If you're watching online, don't allow this moment to pass you by. I know when the Lord gives a word, it's true. I'm talking to somebody in here. Today is the day. Don't allow your heart to keep you from receiving what God has for you today. I'm not trying to beg nobody, but what I understand is that we are in a very pivotal time in life right now. And I ain't got time to pity patty nobody. It is time for us to snatch souls out of hell. It's time for us to snatch souls out of the grip of, of, the, of the devil. It's time for us to say, no, 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 no. You can't keep living that way. You can't keep accepting that as the normal. God desires for us to change and be transformed. And you got to do that by the renewing of your mind. Today is the day. Today is the day. Come on, lift your hands. Father, we thank you right now for this word. I know you spoke a clear word for no one to harden their heart. So, Father, we thank you right now that even as I'm speaking and praying, that for those who've had hearts hardened through life, through circumstances, through things that have happened to them, I'm speaking by the power of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, that you would allow them to release everything that they've kept close to them, those things that have kept them from serving you wholeheartedly. I speak a release over them right now in the, in the name of Jesus. Release them, Father. Allow them to forgive. Allow them to let go. Allow them to release. Don't let them to hold on nothing. Don't let them hold on to nothing that would interfere or keep them from knowing you or that would interfere from them doing and being all that you've called them to be. Today is the day. Today is the day of reckoning. Today is the day of transformation. Today is the day of change. Today is a new day. Every single day you said you give us new mercies. New mercies, new mercies, new mercies. That means you give us an opportunity to do it right. You give us an opportunity to make it right. And so we thank you right now for the word that will pierce their hearts. Will pierce their thoughts. It will allow them to surrender completely and totally to you. If anybody need prayer for healing, we're going to leave the altar open at this time. If you need healing, if you need someone up here to agree with you, we have these wonderful altar workers up here to pray with you, to agree with you. Don't miss an opportunity for someone to agree with you about your health, about your healing, about your wholeness. But I do believe that there is somebody. I, I, matter of fact, I don't believe it. I know it. 
And I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm going to stay up here until you come to me, whoever that is. It could be a couple people. Because I want you to get what God has for you today. So, Father, we bless you. We give you praise and glory for all that you're doing, all that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to go ahead and dismiss you. If you want prayer, like I said, for healing, we have altar workers that will be up here with you.